September 11, 2011, in the nation's capital. Ten years after one of our country's darkest days, we pay tribute through America's pastime. Nationals, Astros, on Masson HD. Steven Strasburg fans into the ballpark on a Sunday afternoon. We'll always have Strasburg fans around here, and we shall never forget the events of September 11, 2001. Ten years later, here we are, and once again, baseball at least can do just a little bit to help heal the nation and help things move forward as it did ten years ago. Bob and FP, so it's time to celebrate another start by a, a budding young star. We're watching the infancy of a wonderful career here with Steven Strasburg. Yeah, and I think the most important thing about his last outing is that everything came out okay, but for Steven Strasburg, he takes the mound for the second time today. But last Tuesday, the story was all about him. And I talked about this during the broadcast. I thought with him pitching, everybody's saying should he pitch, shouldn't he pitch. When you set a goal as an athlete, you want to achieve that goal, and his goal is to take a major league mound in 2011, he did just that. I thought he was fantastic. 14 of 17 first pitch strikes, and he said once he got out of the first inning, it it went from my first start in 381 days to just another big league game. So we're looking for more of what we saw against the Dodgers last time out today from Steven Strasburg. And just in case you need a little updating, his career's record is 5-3 and three with an ERA of 2.71. Very good strikeout to walk ratio. So every one of these starts is another step ahead for Steven and really for the franchise as well. Yeah, it is. I mean, he's going to go out there today. Davey Johnson said yesterday that he's not on a pitch count per se. He's just going to kind of be a touch field thing. So we'll keep an eye on Steven Strasburg. A lot of first pitch outs by the Dodgers in his first start. It's going to be interesting to see if the Astros are patient or aggressive like the Dodgers were. And don't be afraid to pitch to contact because of the defensive guys you have behind you, like Ryan Zimmerman. What a night. Almost pulled off a double play there. Well, he really did. Didn't get the call. Fair balls, foul balls, he's all over it. The Go Glover playing some of the greatest defense of his career. Ryan Zimmerman, a day-to-day -day joy to watch. Nationals baseball on Masson brought to you by AT&T, the nation's fastest mobile broadband network, and by Hyundai. If it's fuel efficient, affordable, stylish, and safe, it's probably a Hyundai. 
Steven Strasburg, his image is all over this ballpark. And now the real thing takes the mound with his Nationals teammates on a beautiful, picture-perfect postcard Sunday afternoon for baseball on September 11th in Washington, D.C. You'll see the Houston Astros for the first time and a few moments ago when the lineup cards were exchanged. Members of the fire and police community coming out to present the lineup cards and one of the good things that has come out of what happened 10 years ago is a renewed admiration in our country of those who protect us whether they be firemen policemen police women the law enforcement agencies first responders a newfound respect that maybe they didn't have in this country before here's the astro lineup and carlos lee how do you stop this guy 17 of 19 hit safely at a clip of 387 and he's hitting 276 and 80 rbis now for the first 13 years in his major league career, at least 80 every season. Steven Strasburg, it'll be his 14th career start, second of this year. Yeah, second start since returning from Tommy John surgery. First one was nice. Last time out, five scoreless innings, gave up just two hits, no walks, four Ks. And through first pitch strikes, as I just said, they opened a 14 of 17 hitters. So it'll be two seam fastball, four seam fastball, curve change from Strasburg. The defense today for the Nats. Morse, Ankiel, and Worth in the outfield. But I think Jason Worth actually is in center field, and Rick Ankiel is in right. Desmond and Zimmerman on the left side. Espinosa and Marrero on the right side, and Wilson Ramos in the squad. So that's the way the lineup was originally posted today with Rick Ankiel in center. And Jason Worth in right, and Davey Johnson switched it at the last minute. So Jason now in center, and Rick Ankiel is in right. Visit train.com for an independent train. Comfort specialist dealer near you. It's hard to stop a train. Humidity at 60%, 81 degrees. It is gorgeous at the ballpark today. So Jason Worth back out there in center field. Henrik and Keel over to right. Last minute change made as they had them posted opposite on the lineup card. And here we go. Stepping in is Jordan Schaefer, who's two for ten in the series. Since coming over from Atlanta, 17 games with the Houston Ball Club, and he's batting 274. First pitch fastball, swing and a miss at 137. Well, I think Jordan Schaefer answered the question, are the Astros going to be aggressive <laughs> against Steven Strasburg today? Astros are fourth in the league in batting average at 260 after they had nine runs on 16 hits last night. But they're 12th in runs and 15th in home runs. Paul Emmel is the crew chief, and he has the plate today. Rob Drake, Alan Porter, David Rackley replaces Gary Darling, the crew chief, on today's crew. Strasburg from the middle of that pitching rubber. I mean, if you continue to see this game plan from opposing ball clubs, Steven Strasburg is going to start flipping in that curveball, oh, oh, maybe even an oh, oh change up. And, you know, the more that teams become aggressive with him, he'll get away from that first pitch fastball. As good as it is, be able to steal strike one with some off speed. And that's inside strike, or rather ball two, strike two. I had an inside strike three, partner. You were close. <laughs> And Schaefer will work the count full here. Jordan Schaefer, 248 overall this year, with an on base percentage of just 319. Flags on the back of the wonderful navy blue jerseys the Nats wear on these Sundays. Yeah, four and one in the Stars and Stripes jerseys this year. Nice. And like I always say, best duties in baseball, period. So Strasburg's going to have to go at least eight pitches to get the first out of the game. And hanging tough is Schaefer.
And there he goes with the first out of the game. Took a while. And Strasburg now in his two starts, five strikeouts without a walk. And did it on a 3-2 changeup, and it was a dandy. Check this one out. 89 miles an hour, Schaefer sitting fastball. Whoop. Check it out on the Exmo. See the grip right there just on the fingertips. The release, you see the inside-out rotation, and that is an awesome shot, guys. Look at that. And strike either way. Next up is Jimmy Paredes, who's only made one token appearance in the series as a pinch runner. 22-year-old switch hitting infielder from the Dominican, and they got him from the Yankees with their closer, Mark Melanson, in the Lance Berkman deal last year. Made the game-winning error the other night for the Nats. Yeah, fielded that infield hit and threw the ball beyond second base, giving the Nats a chance to walk off. He's hitting 290 in 34 games. And nobody uh, catching up with the fastball just yet. Target inner half. That'll get your attention. It's a good pitch. I love the two strike fastball in. Makes the hitter move a little bit. Opens up everything else. You can repeat. You can drop a change up right here. You can do whatever you want after establishing that fastball in. J.D. Martinez bumped up to the number three spot. And he is next. Here's a 3-2 with one out. Up the middle. Ball not hit that hard. And it hits the bag. Preventing Desmond from having any chance. I don't think Ian Desmond had a chance even if this ball doesn't hit the bag. You see it slowed down by the mound right there. Paredes can absolutely fly. So either way, I thought that was a hit. But the fact that it hit the base just cinched it. So a couple of 3-2 counts to start this game out for Steven Strasburg. J.D. Martinez in the series, hit by a pitch, one for nine, runner going, pitch low and away, and it's a high bullet from Ramos that's late, and Parade is easily stealing second. And so you see the speed of Jimmy Paredes right there, fourth stolen base, he's been caught three times, tough pitch to throw for Wilson Ramos. After the jump that Paredes got, he stole that one off Steven Strasburg. And a swing and a miss by Martinez, who's driven in 29 runs. Well, that's one of the reasons they like this young man so much. He's only 24, from Miami. Played small school college baseball. Not as heralded as some other draft choices. Houston took him in the 20th round just two years ago, and here he is in the big leagues. At 338 with 72 RBIs at Double A Corpus Christi. Made the Texas League All Star team. Strasburg's pitch is pulled foul, and the count's 2 2. Big strong Carlos Lee. An RBI, four hits in the series, is next. He is Houston's hottest hitter right now. Astros with a road record of 23 and 51, 49 and 96 overall. Nats are trying to win today to make this a four and five homestand. That was a cross up. And Wilson Ramos thought that was going to be off speed. It was a fastball, and you can get hurt. When you think slow's coming and it's fast, that's how you get hurt as a catcher. Look at him going to block that change up right there. He thought that was going to be a change up. Starting to go down to block it, and then it's self defense. Wow. That ball hits you in the ticker, hits you in the neck. It can do some serious damage. So getting the sign straight right now, getting it all figured out. But that was a scary one for Wilson Ramos. Third full count now. 
here in the first inning for Strasburg. And he drops one right down in the dirt that J.D. Martinez cannot find. Two outs. Second 3-2 changeup for a strikeout in the first inning for Steven Strasburg. 87 miles an hour. Watch it go down. Almost split action on this changeup at the very end. Good block by Wilson Ramos. But once again, Strasburg going to the off speed in a full count situation. This will be an interesting matchup. Maybe the most intriguing of the day between Strasburg and Carlos Lee. He was really on fire, hitting nearly 390 over his last 19 games. That's a strike on the outside corner. And you might be thinking, yeah, he's the Astros' hottest hitter. First base open, two outs. Heck with that. Steven Strasburg's going right after him. I want to see what I have in this situation. I'm going to challenge you. Lee be up around 1300 RBIs by the time this season's over. Oh, that's a front door breaker. And the count's one and two, and Carlos Lee doesn't like the call from Paul Immel. That yeah, was a good pitch. Best curveball of the day so far by Steven Strasburg. He threw it for a strike. Wow. The other curveballs have been balls that appeared to be a strike and broke out of the zone. That's the first one he's established in the strike zone, and everybody in the Astros bench took note of that pitch. Carlos Lee chatted with the umpire before stepping out and then after stepping back in. And that one's off to the right side. You see a guy with a plus fastball and a plus changeup all of a sudden throw his curveball for a strike. And everybody else in the lineup saw that chattering on the bench right now saying, okay, he threw the curveball for a strike. Now he's established all three pitches in the strike zone the first inning. Number 27 coming up. Took him 23 to get through the first two innings here on Tuesday. That ball ripped up the middle by Carlos Lee, and the Astros will take the lead. And Carlos Lee, who's an RBI machine with number 81 on the air, didn't hit it that hard. I just went right after him. And you know, when you've been sitting around for a long time, you finally get back to the major league level. You want to test yourself against the best. And that's why Strasburg went right after Lee. Had a base to work with. You know, maybe in the future, as he settles down, gets more strong, gets healthier. You think about pitching around him in that situation. But right now, he wants to see what he's made of, and he went right after him. I like it. Number five hitter, Brian Bogusevich. Right fielder hitting 292. 27 year old left handed hitter who the Astros drafted out of Tulane in the first round back in 05. And they drafted him actually as a pitcher. Didn't really play a full season as a position player until 2009. Strikeout, an infield hit, a steal, another strikeout, a two out RBI hit by Lee, and a very long inning here, 30 pitches so far. And a ball hit out to center for Jason Worth. Using his glove for shade, that ball keeps on going, and he pulls it in just short of the track. Houston gets a run on two hits.
series today. Rubber game of the three-game set. Hitting 242 as a ball club, 13th in the league in runs. Wilson Ramos having a really good month of September. Seven ball games, three RBIs, and hitting 400. He's hit safely in 16 of his last 19 games at a clip of 318. Chris Marrero right ahead of him, starting to collect some RBIs. Rick Ankiel batting second with a right handed rookie on the mound. This is 26 year old Henry Sosa, longtime property of the Giants. Came over in the Jeff Keppinger deal to Houston. Yeah, on July 19th, we were actually in Houston when that trade took place. Last time out, took a 3-1 to one loss at PNC Park. Allowed two runs on six hits, three walks, and three Ks in six innings of work. Desmond goes up swinging first pitch. A pitcher the Nats had never seen in person before, and an easy pop-up for Matt Downs. Although we should note, you see fielders helping each other out today. The sun is straight overhead. It'll be a tricky day with that sun. It'll be a tricky day for the Stroh's defense. Martinez, Schaefer, and Bogusevic in the outfield. Barmas and Paredes on the left side. Downs and Lee on the right side. And day game after a night game in the squat. Carlos Corcoran. Next up is Rick Ankiel, and he takes a strike. Day game after a night game in the night game in which he took about five foul balls off his mask right back in there today. Was, uh, three RBIs must be a reason that he got last night. And Keel a bouncing ball, and so far, Henry Sosa, two quick outs. He was 10 and 3 in the minor leagues this year. 29 games, 10 starts. He was a triple A Fresno for the Giants. They shipped him off to double A Richmond right down the road here for a while. Then after the trade, he went to double A Corpus Christi and ended up at triple A Oklahoma City in the Houston organization. So he has pitched from coast to coast this year. And making his seventh start with the big club. Ryan Zimmerman is homered in this series, driven into a couple of hits and a walk. He's two for eight. Sosa listed at 6 1, 205. From the Dominican. And a minor league record of 44 and 32. I mean, he's got a good fastball. He talked to the Astros people and they say he works fast, likes to get the ball and throw it. If you look at it right now, he's already towing the slab, looking for a sign. And as soon as Zim gets in there, he is ready to rock and roll. And a 2 0. Gets the inner half with that one. So the Nats will be seeing fastball slider change up today from Sosa. Fastball in the mid 90s slider will go about 82 83 and the change up 86. Zimmerman jammed slightly pops it into right center. Bogusevic is over there to grab it and the Nats are gone quickly bottom of the first. Astros on top in the rubber game by one. Here, here at the ballpark today. A lot of extra security measures have been taken by the Nats over the weekend. I'm sure the Redskins will do that later. The entire city has done that at all the monuments and the important places around town. 
One nothing Houston. Call Luna for up to 70% off all flooring at 877-241-LUNA. Shop smart. Shop Luna. And it's early in the career, but over the last couple of years when he has started, and this is career start number 14, Steven Strasburg has that wonderful strikeout to walk ratio. He just needs a couple of quick innings now. Matt Downs, Clint Barmas, and Carlos Corcoran for the Astros. Seven pitches, five strikes for Henry Sosa. Matt Downs, another former giant waiver pickup. August 25th of last year, and Strasburg misses inside to the leadoff batter in the second. Downs in this series, 0 for 1. He's hitting 280. Now you're not kidding about secure. I went for a run this morning. Want to go over to the Pentagon? Make it right over there at 9:37 a.m. So I'm jogging over to the Pentagon. I get there under one of the on ramps. There's a couple of guys with machine guns greeting me this morning. And I said, "Okay." Did my own little moment of silence at 9:37 a.m. close to the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, partner. I feel safe. This well, city is very secure. We were there yesterday, and if you've never been to the actual memorial, there's a bench for each of the victims of the Pentagon crash. Very wonderfully done. There were workers polishing every one of those. They're made from marble and brass and really impressive. This ball out into right. Danny Espinosa, and he might have had trouble with the sun right at the end of that. Danny, with his great range, appeared to get there. He's got the shades on, but sometimes those shades don't help. When a ball gets right in the sun, there's nothing you can do, and you just see the perfectly placed ball by Matt Downs. Espinosa going back, kind of fighting that ball. You know, when a hitter, a right-handed hitter gets inside a baseball, it's going to tail back. And he broke open to his right side. The ball tailed back to his left side. Sometimes you lose sight of the baseball because it tails back through your glove. And when the ball goes through your glove, you lose sight of the ball. I don't know if Sun had anything to do with that. So here's Clint Barmas, who had two hits and an RBI in the opener of the series. Friday night, didn't play last night. And the Astros, first six batters, three hits. None of them hit that hard, but well placed. Swing and a foul tip. And the 0-2, left side, Zimmerman stays with it. And no chance to turn the double play for Espinosa. It'll be 5-4 on the fielder's choice for the first out. This is starting to remind me a little bit of the third inning John Lannon endured last night when not that many balls were hit hard, but everything was in between fielders. I mean, John threw a number of ground balls last night. He had five ground ball outs in the first two innings, and suddenly the Astros found every hole out there. And before you knew it, bam, six runs on the board. And they found some holes, but there were some lasers hit, too. I mean, I talked about it last night. You pitch long enough, you're going to have outings like that. It's that simple. John Lannon's been probably one of the most consistent pitchers for the Nats all season long. You're going to have days like that if you play long enough. Carlos Corcoran, two for four, three RBIs last night. And this is a catcher hitting a buck 96. Strasburg misses well outside for a ball. The end all be all. I think Strasburg trying to pitch to contact more this year, but his velocity has gone from 96 97 in the first to at the end of the first inning 93. Now he's down to 92 with the fastball. So you know, I'm a speed gun freak. I like to watch it, especially with guys that throw hard, but right now in the second inning, fastball 92.
Eighty seven on that off speed pitch in the dirt two and one. Sosa the pitcher is next. 0 for 9 as a rookie hitting pitcher. Carlos Corcoran switch hitting catcher. 27 from Puerto Rico. And a 2 1 pitch is popped up left side. And just in the first row beyond the camera bay. And it counts 2 2. Nationals Park on September 11th. It's Washington and Houston. And the Astros, a couple of hits in the first inning to score. They've had a hit here in the second. And lead it 1 0. Nats went very quickly on seven pitches. In the bottom of the first. And something's going on with Strasburg. Velocity's down. The bullpen's starting to move out there. Guys are getting loose, right? Jim let by the telephone. Steve McCaddy going to go out there and take a look. But I think everybody in the dugout seeing what I'm seeing. 97 all of a sudden down to 92. Not a good sign. Yeah, they just took a bullpen bench where the guys were sitting back in the shade. Moved it up to the outfield wall. To make room for that inside warm up position. And Tom Gorzolani, a long reliever, is getting loose here. And just to check right now, and Caddy going out there saying, You feel okay? Everything all right? Yeah, I feel fine. Okay, let's go. Should be a good day to get loose. Nice and warm down there. Got a lot of pitches here, and he's only registered four outs already. Close, but ball three. I probably down, probably in. Check it out one more time, yeah. Better velocity, though. I don't want to get too caught up in that, but you know, it is what it is 97 to 92. And Houston's been able to foul off a number of pitches, extending some of these at bats. One on one out three two pitch. And a swing and a miss. 87 pulling the string and strikeout number three. Now all three strikeouts so far today from Steven Strasburg have been three two counts and they've all been change ups. And they've all been good. Check this one out. 87 great pitch. You see the late movement got the two C movement on the change up so the change up has been fantastic today for Strasburg pitch track brought to you by kinetic North America providing world class technology to our homeland and national security customers. Easy fly ball and Keel picks it off and Strasburg a scoreless second with the four five and six hitters coming up.
pitches 30 strikes in his first two innings. Nats trailing one nothing. And a reminder, buy two, get two. We're talking 2012 season tickets. Place a deposit now. You get the rest of this season free at nationals.com slash 2012. Check it out. Michael Morris, a home run, a walk, three for eight in the series, and an amazing swing last night. Yeah, home run number 27, an oppo taco for the Bees, taking a fastball down and in. A good pitch from Wandy Rodriguez. And riding her out the other way. I mean, who hits low line drives the opposite field over a 15-foot scoreboard? Yeah, that's a line drive to right center field for most people. And Michael Morse, it's a homer. And earlier this year, he got under one and hit it in the upper deck out there, way further towards center field. So Michael's having a storybook year, three homers away from 30, sitting on 84 RBIs. Four RBIs fewer than Albert Pujols is Michael Morse. Just out of the top 10. So, so with a breaking ball outside, Henry Sosa, 36 innings this year, has given up just two home runs, the league only hitting around 230 against him. That's a busted bat on a flare to center. Michael so strong it'll carry out to Schaefer. Four in a row to start the game for Sosa. That'll bring in Jason Worth and then Danny Espinosa. <laughs> Worth in the series, two for nine. Batting 230. This kid's showing a pretty good arm so far. Danny Espinosa 0 for 7 in this series with a walk. And these guys playing behind Henry Sosa have to love his little work right here. That ball's going to hit the ground and check up for a hit. How about that? That's about 100 feet in the air. And the Nationals have their first base hit. That is the best hit ever. So if little bloops to the outfield are a beautiful thing, what do you call that? You call that the ball's not carrying the center field today. <laughs> and right off the label, a perfectly placed lob wedge. I think that's a Pro V1X right here over the mound. And watch the spin coming back to the pin. Perfect. Putting for birdie. Mm. Here's Danny Espinoza. Target away. That's a great swing to left field. Down the line. It'll one-hop the wall. Jason Worth wants to score until Bo Porter stops him. And the runners are at second and third with one out on one of Danny Espinoza's better swings since the All-Star break, really. Yeah, breaks up an 0 for 15 for Danny Espinoza. Solid double to left field. And a guy in the Nats clubhouse this morning. The first guy I saw was Danny Espinosa dripping wet with sweat. So he was here early working on the swing in the cage, and you see the results. One for one with a double. Well, he is so strong for his size, he does not have to pull the ball by any means to hit it a long way. That was really great contact. Now he's got strength. He can leave any ballpark anywhere. Opposite field, straight away, pull side, doesn't matter. So here's Chris Marrero, who has three RBIs in this series. And the rookie first baseman looks at a first pitch breaking ball. First 13 ball games, Chris hitting 277. Now this is one of those where if you're Chris Marrero, you take a look at your defense, you see the middle infield is back. They're giving you an RBI, so you're just thinking about playing Pepper with the shortstop, playing Pepper with the second baseman, and if Sosa hangs something, then you drive it. 
I'm thinking of those 13 hits in 13 games. Marrero has maybe only two offers, and then he has two other ball games where he's collected two hits. So he's been pretty consistent after his call up when the Nats were in Cincinnati. That ball's well hit to right. Heading for the track. Worth will score easily over to third. Espinosa, a very productive out that ties the game. And Marrero's fifth career run batted in. How about Chris Marrero's approach with runners in scoring position the last three or four games? A couple of clutch hits in his homestand. A good approach, thinking about using the whole field. Gets a hanging slider 84 miles an hour out over the plate. Instead of rolling over that pitch, he stays inside of it, drives it other way. Scores worth, advances Espinosa, great at bats. Now let's see how smart the young Houston pitcher is. With a good swinging number eight man in there, the pitcher on deck. Looks like he'll get a visit from Doug Brokale. And maybe with what I just mentioned in mind, Brokale wants to go have a chat with his youngster just to make sure. He doesn't lay something in there that Wilson Ramos can crush. And Wilson has been doing plenty of that lately. You want me to tell you what I would do? <laughs> I think you know what I would do. Put up four fingers right now. Every single time. First inning. They will. Ninth inning. Sixteenth inning. I'm walking the eight-hole hitter to get to the pitcher every single time. I don't care if the pitcher's the best hitting pitcher in the history of the game. I'm going to pitch to a guy that hits once every five days and doesn't work on it as much than a guy that gets here at 2 o'clock, gets in the cage, and hits every day and gets paid to drive in runs. Agreed. Too many ball clubs get themselves in a pickle. Early in a ball game by pitching to the number eight man. I mean Ramos 318 over the last nearly three weeks. Now, it's not going to work every single time but I guarantee you if you average it out over a 10 year span it's going to work more times than it doesn't. I mean Steven Strasburg could swing the bat we all know that but if I'm Brad Mills I'm taking a chance with the other team's pitcher. He does have an RBI got that last year. Strasburg in his career, one for 21. Outfield well around to the right. The center fielder, Jordan Schaefer, is probably 50 feet off center toward the right center gap. So you know where they're going to pitch him. At least we thought we did. They miss way inside. And then, of course, the right fielder, Bogusevic, will play very shallow. Well, he's got pop. He oh, won't... he'll surprise somebody if he gets a hold of one. Believe he, me. he hit one out in BP the other way. Pretty good hack. I'd imagine if you're around Tony Gwynn for three years, some of that has to rub off, right? <laughs> it's just by osmosis, hanging around the best hitter ever. One of the best hitters ever. Yeah, if you learn anything, I'll hit one right through the 5.5 hole right here. That's where Tony Gwynn made a living. That's a fastball that sizzles to the outside corner up in the zone. One ball, two strikes. Well, the Nats have made Sosa work a little longer here. Seven pitches first inning, 18 more here. And he wants a sign for Bo Porter in a two-strike count. Yeah. I think uh, Bo gave him the level off and get an RBI to right field <laughs> sign. Put it in play sign. Swing and a miss and a pitch down and in. Nats tied the game, though. Worth the base hit, Espinosa the big double. Marrero sack fly, 1 1 on a gorgeous day in D.C.
won 2-0 Nats. Tie game, top of the third coming up. Visit FCA.org, the association for IT pros. And here's Debbie with our sideline report. Well, today is Steven Strasburg's 14th big league start, and I asked Davey Johnson what he's seen out of Steven as far as his maturity as a pitcher. I thought when I first saw him come breaking in last year, I thought he overthrew. Uh, I thought he muscled more than I'd ever seen him muscle. Um, and I even told him, you know, before his last two starts in the minor leagues, free and easy. Don't don't stress yourself out. Stay nice and loose and just hit your spots. And, and that's what I saw up here. Davey told me, too, the way Steven pitched in his last start reminded him of how, of how he pitched in the Olympics. And he, of course, did say free and easy. He doesn't have to add to that fastball. Bob, FP? Well, he is big and strong enough. And hopefully we'll see a turn of events here in the third where he can start getting some quicker outs. It's been a bit laborious. 15 pitches last inning when he pitched around a leadoff hit. Top of the order for the Astros, Schaefer, Paredes, and Martinez. And sometimes you go with that free and easy approach. You start popping the gun even harder than you do if you try to muscle the ball. And I think that's what Davey Johnson's talking about. Go nice and easy. Don't try too hard. You throw a pitch and you look up and it's 98. You didn't even try. Just like the first time Schaefer swung and missed on the first pitch. After falling off a bunch and having a very long at bat he eventually did strike out. And that's on the corner. As Strasburg gets called on a 94. And a ball hammered to right. Right at Rick and Keel for the first out. For those of you who have season tickets. Clock is ticking. Thursday is your deadline to receive that 5% discount. Renewing for next year. Red carpet rewards the Grand Slam easy payment plan. And the Curly W renewal gift await you at nationals.com slash renew. As we all make our plans for 2012. Here's Jimmy Paredes who bounced that single off the second base bag first time up. Stole second, scored on the two out Carlos Lee base hit. So first time up Jordan Schaefer struck out on nine pitches. That timeline drive to right on four pitches. You know that's what pitching to contact does for you. If you're Steven Strasburg right there you'll take a line out to right on the fourth pitch versus battling the guy following balls off and getting a strikeout through nine pitches. So even though he hit that ball hard, you'll take that second at bat if you're Strasburg versus Schaefer than the first one with the strikeout. Absolutely. Steven had four strikeouts in his five innings the other night, throwing only about 11 pitches per inning. 96 as he rears back and fires it by Paredes. Borzolani still doing his tossing. Swing and a foul tip into the catcher's mitt. And strikeout number four. And again, Strasburg topping out at 96 here in the third inning now. So a lot like Jordan Zimmerman. We've seen Jordan sit at 92, 93 all season long. And then when he needs the reach back, he's got it in his back pocket. So while we talked about him being 96, 97 in the first, 92 in the second, you know, he had some low 90 pitches to start this inning off, but when he needs a strikeout, the last couple, 96, 96. So maybe he is doing what Davey Johnson just said in that sound by free and easy. And when I need my good fastball, go to it. A lot like a shortstop that has to go in the hole. You use your arm when you need it. J.D. Martinez with a count of 0-1. He's firing now. I think he knows this might be it, too, as we watch Gorzolani get all the way hot in the bullpen. By the way, that was our Dodge Ram Expo a moment ago. The Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram Summer Clearance event. Offers won't last long. Hurry into your local dealership. Seen Steven go to the rosin bag a lot here. Trying to keep things dry out there. Keep that grip. 
Martinez strikeout victim number two first time and he'll hit that ball up the middle Espinosa gets there across his body wonderful play that he made look ridiculously easy it is not that easy ladies and gentlemen from short center field broadcast on mass and brought to you by Verizon Wireless America's largest and most reliable wireless network and by Hyundai if it's fuel efficient affordable stylish and safe it's probably a Hyundai a Strasburg Sunday here at the ballpark bottom of the third coming up top of the order for the Nats in a 1-1 game Steven Strasburg 57 pitches now in three innings a pitch more than he threw in five the other night and Ian Desmond takes a pitch it's a strike after popping up on the first pitch he saw from the rookie Henry Sosa inside one one Jimmy Paredes pretty deep. Guys usually bunt early in the count though when they look for hits. It's 2 1 here. And Desmond, why bunt when you can hit one out of the ballpark? Ian Desmond's eighth of the year. And the Nats lead 2 to 1. Boy, when he hits them, they are low lasers that get out of here in a hurry. Probably not too many see you laters on his highlight reel because there's not any time for it. Yeah, I thought about it, FP, but I can't say you when the ball's already out of here. No, you'd have been like, there's no chance. RBI number 40 for Desmond, who's now hitting around 300 his last 26 games. So much intrigue about him in that leadoff spot because of his multi dimensional game. And Keel takes one outside, counts even 1 1. For the Nats, they're 141st of the year, seventh in the league in home runs. Astros have given up the most, 168 with that one. And check out the home run by Desmond one more time, eighth of the year. Just a hanging slider. Backed up a little bit on Sosa, so it didn't break away, it broke in. Desmond obviously getting the barrel on the baseball, and that was out of here in about three seconds. And Keel with a high drive heading for the bullpen area. And that ball is gone. Rick and Keel with his ninth. Too often do we get back-to-back -back jacks? How about that? You think it's over? 
Maybe not. <laughs> Look at the two guys coming up. I mean, this is taking keep the line movement to a whole new extreme. And Keels banged a couple of opposite field homers on this homestand. And so Desmond's eighth and Ed Keel's ninth have the Nats up three to one. Yeah, how about that display of power? A little opposite field job from Ann Keel. Fastball up and away, getting on top of it. Lots of backspin right there. And just getting out to left field. And Zimmerman smelling a first pitch fastball goes up hacking. Ryan City 11 driven in 43. Having Morse and Werther on the on deck circle right now. Zimmerman with a drive to center. And three in a row. You think they're finished yet? <laughs> you called it, partner. Man, no sooner than Rick and Keel crossed home plate. Ryan Zimmerman in the box, you said it. You think they're finished yet? Apparently not. Back to back to back. You see the high leg kick that we've grown to love, and it's down early. You see the hip throw right there, the barrel throw, head on the baseball. Like I always say with Ryan Zimmerman, nobody keeps their head on the baseball better in baseball. Kind of right where he hit the one the other day. Same spot. Three and counting for the Nats. Number four man, Michael Morse coming up. Nobody out here in the third. Nats lead 4-1. Hmm. And uh, that was not a single to the opposite field swing. Why not turn it loose just for a pitch or two here? See where the count takes you. So the Nats have now hit 143 home runs. That's on the corner, 0-2. Well, not too many times this season have we seen back to back to back home runs anywhere. But not too many times this year have we seen two guys in the on deck circle. Michael Morse and Jason Worth were both on deck when Ryan Zimmerman was hitting. To the right side. Pitcher had Michael reaching on an 0 2, and that's the first out. It was fun while it lasted, and maybe Worth has something in mind here with one out. And right now you have the lead. The important thing is it's all about good at bats now here in the middle of the game. Actually, it's still the early innings because we're in the third middle of the game about to arrive. But the Nats have blasted their way to a three run lead. Worth's next homer will be his 20th. I'm sure when Doug Brokale went out there, that was a great trip by him. He said, hey, they're solo home runs. We're still in this game. You know, it might seem bad right now, but look at the scoreboard. Going down by three runs. Young guy, good trip right there. Calm him down. So, hey, let's try some other pitches, some sliders away. And we talk about settling down a young pitcher. That was a good trip. Last time the Nats went back to back to back home runs, Saturday, July 11th of 09 at Houston in that 13 to 2 win. Nick Johnson hit his sixth, Josh Willingham his 11th, and Adam Dunn hit his 23rd. Craig Stammen got a little run support that night. 13 runs on a Washington record, 21 hits. By the way, you know who the Nats beat that night? Mike Hampton. But he was out of the ball game by the time that happened. Felipe Paulino gave up those three. Here's a one-two to 
Jason Worth, and that's a fastball that just misses upstairs. I'm not going to tell you what happened the day after that game. And a 2 2. You can look it up. Fun when it happens, and it happens here at home. And Worth on a foul tip, and that got a piece of Carlos Corporan, who's the early favorite for the Vesna Trophy in the NHL this year. He has had everything bouncing off him as the final line of defense here in these last two days. If he was on my team, his nickname would be Bruce. He has been wearing it some kind of left and right the last two games. You get three in a row for me and Desmond last night in the same at bat. Yeah. Right off the mask. Well, that made up for his three RBIs, and he's back in there today. And worth on a swing and a miss. Second strike in the second strike out of the game for Sosa. Second out of the inning. Masson wants to thank you who have followed all season on Facebook, Twitter, and mobile alerts. Next weekend, fans at Nats Park will receive chances to win exclusive prizes and experiences from the Nationals all weekend. So follow us at Facebook.com slash Nationals, Twitter.com slash Nationals. And you can text Nats Social to 29292 for all the details. This ball is off the glove of Schaefer. And Danny Espinosa will stop at second base. As he hit that ball about 390 out to deep right center. We'll see how they score it. It's a double. Looked like a makeable play, but it's a tough day for the outfielders, FP. There's really no, not a whole lot routine out there today. Well, there's nothing routine when you're 400 feet away from home plate and the fence is approaching. You're on the warning track. That's a double all the way. So for Danny Espinosa from Southern California today, double double, and he'll know what I mean. Chris Marrero, the hitter, sack fly last time. And the Nats do have their sixth hit. That ball well hit by Marrero. This will drive in another run. Nationals lead five to one. As they are putting on a long distance show here in the third inning. Marrero second RBI of the day. And Chris Marrero is putting on a runners in scoring position how to hit clinic the last three nights. Once again runner on second two outs. I'll tell you what two out RBIs are golden they're back breakers and Chris Marrero. Once again comes through how about the approach with runners in scoring position. Lovely just beautiful today. Now the phone has made its noise out in the Houston bullpen, and Anario Del Rosario looks like he's in a hurry. Here's Ramos, and again, they don't have to pitch to him. There might be in fact, the Astros are waiting to see if the Nats send up somebody in the on-deck circle for Strasburg, and they will. So they will pitch to Ramos now because Strasburg is about to be pinch hit four by Corey Brown. Well, it's just too bad Steven couldn't be a little quicker with some of those outs early. He'd be the beneficiary of some good run support here. But the bigger picture is what we have in mind. And the key thing is Strasburg got back out there today. 57 pitches. A run on three hits. And he can still get the win, right? If you go bullpen day from here out, doesn't the official score at the end of the game say who was the most effective? In well, that's, that's only for relievers. So you, there's no way that he can get a win in this. Not as a starter. 
I know you have to go five to qualify, but I thought if it's a bullpen day, that just after the fifth inning, then a reliever. I thought he did a good job. And maybe he did throttle back on the fastball, and maybe he was pitching to contact more, but the changeup was very good from Strasburg today and counts when he needed it most. Two balls, one strike to Ramos. Walked intentionally first time. And he's having a good at bat, three and one. I don't know, maybe there's always the possibility they could have sent Brown up there as a decoy. But he'd have to be called back before he gets announced. If Strasburg is to stay, but it looks like that's not the scenario. Took a little bit off that breaking pitch, and it's three and two. Yeah, that was a slider that didn't slide and acted just like a changeup. And Ramos will take the walk. Inning continues. And it will be Corey Brown for Strasburg. Corey Brown 0 for 2 as a big leaguer. And here comes Brad Mills. Boy, the end came quickly for Henry Sosa. Untouchable first inning. Infield hit, double sack fly, got him in the second. And it was hammer time here in the third. So he is done after just two and two thirds. This call to the bullpen is packaged by the UPS store. We love logistics. We also love power in the home park. 5 1 Nets. One month free wireless service and a free smartphone just by signing up for Cox Wireless at their local solution store or by visiting Cox.com. So the Nats finish Sosa after 58 pitches, 37 strikes. And Steven Strasburg, FB, your thoughts on his three innings? Well, he struggled early to get the ball in the strikes so on a lot of 3 2 counts, but when he needed to make a pitch, he did, and it was the changeup today. You see a couple of changeups right there, and all the strikeouts for Strasburg, I believe, came on the changeup. So when you talk about a process and getting to a point, I think today was a big step in the right direction once again. And maybe after the first outing, all of us, including myself, expectations were a little bit higher today, but we have to. Keep in mind, you know, human being here working toward a goal, and that goal is to be effective and better than ever in 2012, not so much 2011. But all in all, I think a nice outing once again for Steven Strasburg. 25-year-old Anario Del Rosario pitched a scoreless ninth inning here in the 11-inning game on Friday contact, night. Yeah. He faced Morris Worth and Espinosa in that oh, inning. Boy. He faces Corey oh. Brown here.
Second base Marrero after the RBI double. First base Ramos. Corey Brown coming over with Henry Rodriguez in the Josh Willingham deal. Nine days before Christmas last year. And he'll take one low and inside on the 0-2 count. Ian Desmond got all this started. On a 2-1 pitch with a line drive to left. Out of the ballpark. Corey Brown and just fouled. Looking for his first big league hit. Corey Brown, 25 years of age from Tampa. Originally taken as the 59th player overall by Oakland back in 07. Oh, oh boy. So, Carp, I'm reading the rule online right now. It says if a starter does not last five or more innings, but his team has the lead when he is relieved and does not relinquish the lead for the rest of the game and wins, the rule spells out if there's only one relief pitcher, he gets the W. If there's more than one relief pitcher, the official score is instructed to award the W to the pitcher who was the most effective for his team. So I guess you could make the argument that it was Strasburg, but we'll see what happens. Long way to go. News to me, but we learn something new at the ballpark every day, don't we? How about three homers in a row? Desmond and Keel opposite field. And then, yeah, guess who's going to go straight away? Mr. Up the Middle himself, Ryan Zimmerman. Enjoy doing every night, you know, and and they do a good job doing it here. Every single night we do it, and, and it's going to be extra special today, you know, uh, just showing the troops that we care a lot about them, and you know, the things we do is is, is you know, we play baseball for for our job, but it's also fun, and those guys, you know, put their life on the line uh, for our freedom every day, and just to show them that we appreciate it and care for them is a, is a huge honor for us. Well said by the young man from the beaches of Southern California. It's our DynCorp International Troop Rep Recognition. And as Colin so well said, even more special today. At DynCorp, we serve today for a better tomorrow. And he talked to all the players and how 9-11 affected them and where they were and what they did. I talked to John Landon this morning. Very interesting story. He grew up on Long Island. He was in high school. On September 11, 2001, and they had an announcement. Anybody whose parents work in the World Trade Center, please report to the office. And he said half the school was in the office. Wow. Tom Gorzolani takes over. Top of the fourth inning. Facing Lee, Bogusevic, and Matt Downs. Tom Gorzolani goes 3-0 on the first batter. Carlos Lee, who singled up the middle first time for an RBI, his 81st. Four-pitch walk. 
with a four run lead. So Strasburg goes three innings, three hits, a run. Didn't walk anybody. Four strikeouts, 57 pitches, 39 strikes. He brings in Brian Bogusevic here. Fly to center, first time. Lefty lefty matchup. And Gorzolani misses again. He'll get a visit from his catcher. Fastball is in there. One ball, one strike. Right now for Tom Gorzolani and whoever follows him, it's about getting ahead and throwing strikes with the Nats ahead by four. They about hit the Astros 7 3. Ball sizzles in at 92 and it counts even 2 2. Next up is Matt Downs, who has singled today. Great breaking ball on a two strike count for the first out here in the fourth. A little milestone right there for Tom Gorzolani throwing the ball out. Strikeout number 500 in his career. On a slider away to Brian Bogusevic. Good pitch. Throw the ball out. Major League Baseball sticker guy probably in the dugout somewhere. And he'll keep that ball and put it on his mantle. There he is. Major League Baseball sticker guy. We like him. It's authentic. Matt Downs with a blooper to right center off the glove of Danny Espinosa first time up. One on one out here in the top of the fourth inning. Lit Barmus. Solid veteran. Had a good ball game here on Friday night, waiting on deck. Orzelani's fallen behind 2 0. In the air, right side. Out goes Espinosa, and I know he's hoping Rick Ankiel calls this ball. But that sun out there today, no infielder wants any part of that thing. Routine out for the second one. Barmas will be coming up. We'll check in with ATT trivia. The Astros have lost 96 games, the second most in franchise history. They've been a solid, solid organization for many years. There's more to that story, and we'll tell that to you in a moment. Yeah, my memories of the Astros are going in the old Astrodome, the Killer Bees. Mm. Bagwell, Biggio, those guys playing hard, good baseball teams, good pitching. A tough team to beat for many years. Right hander Jordan Lyles. And another pop up on the right side. This one, Danny Espinosa in the shade, thanks to the leather. And Gorzolani, after the walk, comes out and gets a quick top of the fourth. Top of the order coming up again.
moment ago, and George carrying the flag. Who would dare beat him while he's carrying the Stars and Stripes? The answer is no one. He goes coast to coast. Those other presidents were risking impeachment had they passed him with that flag. So that's the fun part of today here at the ballpark. The Geico president's race, bottom of the fourth coming up. And the top of the order for the Nats. There's the Pentagon Memorial. There is a marble bench with stainless steel underneath it with the name of each victim right on the end of the bench there from the terrorist attacks back on September 11th, 2001. We visited during the afternoon yesterday, but we were told you have to go back at nightfall when the water under each bench is lit up. The stainless steel reflects it and is truly a haunting, beautiful sight. A somber morning, somber day as we remember our fallen heroes. But once again, as it was 10 years ago, baseball helps us all heal. September 11th attacks were on a Tuesday. Baseball was again played the following Monday night. I was in Oakland playing for the A's. Barry Zito struck out 10 Texas Rangers on September 9th and then about a week or so off. I remember all of us coming to the clubhouse together. We actually had counselors come in and talk to us and tell us to quit watching all the CNN replays of what happened, that it wasn't good for you. Hmm. You keep having those images in your head that it's going to get you depressed. So they wouldn't let us watch after the first couple of days. You know, you practiced, we worked out, we had inner squads. I think we were 30 games over 500 at the time of the attacks. We ended up 102 and 60 that year, but everybody remembers where they were, obviously. And then, of course, you guys went on to the playoffs against the Yankees. Played in the first playoff game in Yankee Stadium. And they had a Port Authority, Port Authority, NYPD, NYPD around the horseshoe and home plate. The last two guys were NYFD. They were in their uniforms with dust all over them. Joe Torrey came out to home plate and hugged them. They had the flag flying that was at the World Trade Center all tattered in center field. We ended up losing game five of that series in Yankee Stadium. I remember how loud it was. And I knew it was my last big league game, and I sat on the top step for about 20 minutes and watched the crowd. And I said, you know what? They need this way more than the Oakland A's. And it was the only time in my career that I thought, you know what? It's okay to lose. Hmm. After Desmond took strike three, Rick Ankeel takes ball four. Third walk given to the Nats by the Astros today, and Ryan Zimmerman will be the hitter. I just gotta have, to have to ask you, though. When President Bush came out and stood on the top of the mound, not halfway down the hill or at the bottom of the hill like most of them do, when George W. Bush threw that strike, what was that like? Well, that was game three of the World Series. We were just the ALDS. But when he did that, partner, I'll tell you what, one of the coolest things I've seen on a baseball field, and I watched the story, and if you go to MLB.com, you can see it to where President Bush is telling about how Derek Jeter said, you got to toe the slab. Yeah. And he went out there, and you know, Mayor Giuliani and President Bush were scared. They were worried for their safety. You know, game three, World Series, big stage, everybody in the ballpark in the Bronx. And he went out there and he towed the slab and he threw a perfect strike to Todd Green. He was catching. I said, you know what? That's probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen. They were chanting USA at the time. And getting back to the ALDS, I've never seen a stadium actually move physically mm. it was so loud and so crazy when they beat us in game five yankee stadium was actually bouncing up and down the upper deck was actually moving when they won the game zimmerman gets jammed and pops it up short center downs out schaefer in and his glasses ablaze with that sunshine he makes the catch two down that'll bring in michael morse Magnificent day here in Washington. 81 degrees at game time. Just a, a bank of clouds off to the north and the northeast of us, but right over the ballpark, just crystal clear today. By the way, there's, a, there's an old stadium here in town that moves. Redskin fans will tell you when they were at RFK, 
and the skins would score a touchdown, that upper deck would sway back and forth. And I was there for the World Cup in 94. <laughs> Mexico scored a goal against Italy, and I felt the thing moving. So it takes a lot of energy and a lot of noise to do that. Yankee Stadium and RFK. Michael Morse, right center. That ball's got a chance. And it's caught on a slide by Bogus Seven. Nicely done. And that's Lever Runner. They've stranded five. And some ceremonies at the Pentagon today is completely surrounded by security, as it should be on September 11th. I'll never forget, and um, it's uh, it's tough, you know. I mean, the old saying, you know, take a step back, take a step forward, and I mean, we had to lose so much, you know, to um, take a step forward, you know, for our unity and our freedom, and you know, um, you know, you never you never saw people talk and you know appreciate you know firefighters and police, you know, men and you know military as much as they do now. Yeah, the point we made earlier. One of the good things that came out of 10 years ago, a new appreciation, admiration, and thankfulness in this country for those who protect us and who are not compensated nearly well enough for what they do. They do it because they love their country and they want us to be safe. I always thought that the best paid people in the country should be those who protect us and those who educate us. It doesn't really work that way. Two balls and a strike to Carlos Corcoran. And a pinch hitter appears to be next as they have Jason Michaels in the on-deck circle. Tom Gorzolani, 14 pitches, five strikes in that fourth inning, but he got out of that frame on only five strikes without a run, and there's Michaels. And Jordan Lyles is up again. Ah, uh, Gorzolani painting the inside corner. His second strikeout. Great fastball. Verizon on the pitch track. Let's check it out again. A perfectly located 2-2 fastball on the inner half. Once again, good frame by Wilson Ramos. Pitch track brought to you by Verizon, America's largest and most reliable wireless network. It's up and in. Michaels has a pinch hitter this year, 8 for 43 with a couple of RBIs. He's hitting 203, two homers, and 10 batted in. And Gorzolani at 85 made it look a lot quicker than that. A 
about this high octane left hander right now. He has five outs and three of them on strikes. He's loose now. We've seen this all year from Tom Gorzolani. He gets loose and he gets that ball up and out of his glove quickly. 91 appears like 94, 95. With his arm stroke, it's very short. He takes it out of his glove, gets it down, gets it up to release point quicker than most, and that's where the deception comes with his fastball. He faces Jordan Schaefer now at the top of the order. Schaefer a strikeout, a line out to right today. Two for 12 in the series. And a little blooper down the left field line. That'll check up in front of Michael Moore. Schaefer makes about a 30-foot turn, and he'll go back. And the Astros have their first base hit since the second inning. We told you about their 96 losses, second most in franchise history. Only the Astros, the Angels, and Rockies have never lost 100. Of course, there are some ball clubs that got over a 100-year head start on those three. And I would say that if baseball holds true to what it is over the years, all, all of them will have that happen at some point. It's just hard to stay on top for long. With the runner going, a swing and a bouncer to Desmond. Plenty of time to throw out Jimmy Paredes. And Tom Gorzolani has a couple of scoreless innings under his belt. Nats by four. to the bottom of the fifth inning. Ryan Zimmerman was in high school on September 11, 2001, and it's a day he'll never forget. It's one of those days you'll never forget where you were and you'll never forget, obviously, all the people that were lost, but obviously all the people who were heroes and, and helped so many people live. And, uh, you know, it's one of those days that America is, you know, it's, it's a tough day for us. But, uh, you know, I think we should... Obviously celebrate the heroes from that day and at the same time, you know, mourn the people that we lost. And Ryan and his teammates reach out to our servicemen on a daily basis. And of course they admit that today it's a special honor to recognize the military and the members of our Homeland Security. Bob, FP. Thank you, Debbie, and thank you, Ryan. It's time for a Ford drive of the day and let's make it a Ford three-wheel drive. Because there were three big flies all in a row. And Desmond in the third led it off with a home run. A little knockdown two iron. And Rick Ankeel goes the other way for his ninth. High fastball away. Created a lot of backspin. Just gets out of the ballpark. And how about Zen? His 12th of the year to left center field. He's hit a couple of there this homestand. So those are our Ford drives of the game. Bottom of the fifth underway, the pitcher is right-hander Jordan Lyles. Slider to the outside corner. He is 20 years old. 38th overall player taken back in 08. Out of Hartsville, South Carolina. Baseball, football player there. Good hitter, good athlete. And he will not be 21 years of age until the 19th of October. Worth with a base hit and two trips, a run scored. Jason in this series, three for 11. 
to skip back from that one. And the count goes full three and two. So Lyles making his 17th appearance. He's made 15 as a starter. Hasn't gone well for him. Nearly a 5.3 ERA, but he strikes out Jason Worth. So Danny Espinosa will come in, and he's had two great at bats today, followed by Chris Marrero, who's had the same. You know, at P, we saw a classic example there of what Danny did. He hit that ball extremely hard the other way, so the next time up, he gets something he can work with and hit it out to right center. Now that they know he can use the ballpark, they're trying different approaches on it. Yeah, whatever adjustment he made today has been a nice one. I mean, we'll keep an eye on it right here, but it just looks like it swings a lot more short today. And a couple of doubles, good at bats, like you said, one to left, one to right. Because if you've got power, they'll keep it away from you until you can prove you can do something with that pitch. And then after he racked him for a double left field line, he got one out to the scoreboard in right center. That's got some top spin on it over to Carlos Lee. He'll feed the pitcher for the second out. But when you talk about Danny Espinosa and maybe looking at him in the future, to me he doesn't need to hit 20 home runs. If he does, great. But, you know, I'd rather see Danny hit 290, oh, yeah. 300, and I think he can and play the second base that we know he can. I think the best defensive second baseman in the league I don't care what people say about Brandon Phillips. I'll take Danny Espinosa any day, but if he can cut down on the strikeouts, put the ball in play more, be a 280, 290 guy, steal you 20 bases, well, if the home runs come, they come. But to me, he's a complete baseball player, and he doesn't need the home runs. And I see Espinosa as a guy who would hit 35 or 40 doubles for you. Yeah. And doubles, you know, we don't talk about this very often, and I know when George Will wrote that wonderful book of his men at work and did a whole chapter tracking the managing of Tony La Russa and then later hitting with Tony Gwynn. They talked about the importance of doubles in the game of baseball. It's not talked about nearly enough because the extra base hits really add up to productive offense, getting guys home, driving in runs and producing scoring on a consistent basis over six months. And you're fast like Espinosa too. I mean, double, you're going to score on anything. Yeah, if they make a mistake, then you're on third. There's a ball slapped to the right side by Marrero, and it slices foul. Chris Marrero has a sack fly to right field and a double out to the end of the bullpen fence in left center. So Chris is using the ballpark today, and he's tacked on two more RBIs to his total. He has six big league RBIs in 14 games. And he takes the bouncer. Three and two. Well, Steven wants to hang out and support his teammates here. 57 pitches in three innings. Good day's work. Now head up to New York and get your work done there and get ready for your next start. Guerrero taking great hacks. Of all the guys that have gotten called up from AAA, I think Chris Marrero is making the biggest statement. Yeah, and maybe one of the least heralded of the ones who have been called up. He's been plugging away. Look at that shot off the glove of Lee, and another base hit for Chris Marrero. He's now 15 for 49 as a big league hitter, so he's batting 306. A two strike adjustment right there and let the throttle out on a double in the left center field gap last time this time take a little out of your swing put the ball in play on the outer half I'll go that way with it good extension good head to the baseball and good job of putting the ball in play hard once again on the Jeep Exmo the Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram summer clearance event still in progress offers that won't last long hurry into your local dealership are they finally going to pitch to Wilson Ramos today there he is, 306 with that half dozen RBIs. And there's nobody on deck for the Nats. Ramos with the bouncer left side. And man, Jimmy Paredes almost caused Clint Barmas to lose sight of that ball. 
They get the force play. We're on to the sixth inning. 5-1 Nats. Right now, he will be facing three, four, and five Martinez, Lee, and Bogusevic here in the top of the sixth inning. By two, get two. How about 2012 season tickets? And we still have some home games left against the Marlins and the Braves as we wrap up the season here at Nationals Park, and you'll get tickets for those too. Drop by nationals.com slash 2012 for all of your season ticket information Marlins will be here next weekend for three the Braves the weekend after that so we've got nothing but hop short hops and skips around the Eastern Division the rest of the way as far as the schedule goes four coming up in New York starting tomorrow night Ross Detweiler and R.A. Dickey Chin Ming Wong and Dylan G on Tuesday Tommy Malone and Mike Pelfrey Wednesday and Thursday at 1 o'clock. John Lennon and Chris Capuano in New York. And John will be eager to get back out there after things came to an end quickly in the third inning last night. J.D. Martinez takes one outside. Gorzolani first two innings, 26 pitches, 13 strikes. El Caballo is next. Swing and a miss in Gorzolani. 85 pulling the string of the right handed batter there. A good change up, good fastball combo so far. He saw the slider for his 500th strikeout. So Gorzolani feeling it. Good tempo, good pace, pounding the zone. And the count stays full. Astros box score. Hits by Paredes and Lee in the first producing their only run. Leadoff hitter Downs blooped one in the second. And then Schaefer did the same thing with two outs last inning. The Nats pitching staff has held the Houston offense down. And there's a, another leadoff walk. Tom Gorzolani didn't want to walk J.D. Martinez. It's his second leadoff walk in three innings. Lee was the first guy two innings ago, and he'll face the big, strong right-hander here. Speaking of doubles, we talked about this last inning. 
And I made the point last night. Carlos Lee only has 15 home runs this year. A lot of ball clubs do not challenge him, especially at Minute Maid Park. With Hunter Pence gone, I mean, this is a lineup that can be pitched to. But he has 36 doubles. So that's how you produce 80 RBIs to go with the power. And that doubles total of 36 is third most in the league. Behind Justin Upton and Troy Tulowitzki. He's tied with Ryan Braun in that department. Two and one. Yeah, I guess that's how you drive in 80 runs with hitting just 15 home runs. Lots of doubles. And he's done it 13 years in a row to start his career. Second longest streak ever. Change up and that ball bounced just foul. So if he has a chance to do it next year, he'll be tying Jeff Bagwell. So that American League deal, that was for next year? The Astros going to the American League or was Not that 2013? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's been announced, that part of it. Sounds to me like the commissioner's got that thing on the fast track. Yeah. I mean, the guy in the box would benefit the most if the Astros do move to the American League. Oh, man. Carlos Lee DHing. And he knows how to do it because he's been over there before. Michael Morse on the trot at the end of that one. And he grabs it for the first out. Now it's set up a very interesting American League West with Houston and Texas. And then the Mariners, A's, and Angels. And a bouncer out to short. Should be two. Espinosa double clutch. And he's still able to turn the 6-4-3. Tom Gorzolani, three scoreless innings now. Nationals baseball on Masson brought to you by USAA. USAA would like to thank the women and men of the armed forces for protecting our freedom and keeping us out of harm's way. That grand old flag, always inspirational to look at here at the ballpark. And it was hanging from the Pentagon 10 years ago today. So the Nats coming up in the bottom of the sixth inning. Looks like Steven Lombardozzi will pinch hit for Tom Gorzolani. Who is the pitcher of record and has three scoreless innings to contribute to the three solid innings that Steven Strasburg threw. And it looks like Sean Burnett will be next in the seventh. All right, no pressure situation here. Nice time. Leading off an inning for Steven Lombardosi just to pretend he's uh, leading off a ball game like he did all year long at double A AA and triple A and come up with that first big league knock. That way. 
white one. Second inning of work for Jordan Lyles. First pitch change up and it just missed. Tom Gorzolani gets those three scoreless innings. We'll give you his pitch count in a moment. Saved a bunch with that double play ball a moment ago. And Lombardozzi will bounce one past the mound on the charge. Barmas and a good play to throw him out. So here's the TV schedule coming up at New York tomorrow night. Look at Mass in HD for the four game series there. And it'll be Detweiler and Dickey. 7 10 first pitches Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then a 1 10 first pitch from Chris Capuano against John Lennon on Thursday. And then we ping pong right back home to take on the Marlins next weekend. And then it'll be off to Philadelphia and then the Nats come right back home to take on the Braves before finishing the whole thing in Florida Friday the 28th. Pardon me Wednesday the 28th season ending on a Wednesday this year. Desmond with a good shot the other way and Ian Desmond has a two for four day. You pull a home run down the line and hit a base hit to right. That's big league hitting. Nationals box score a good looking one today. A couple of hits now for Desmond. Danny Espinosa. Chris Marrero have two. And Marrero two RBIs. And of course Desmond and Keel Zimmerman back to back to back home runs in the third. Off the pitcher's glove. Keeps it close, throws out Ankeel, and down to second base, Desmond. So here's Zimmerman, one for three with his 12th homer of the year. And Ryan in this series is three for nine with two homers, three RBIs, and he has scored four runs. Lyles goes with the breaking ball and misses outside. By the way, with their three homers today, including Zimmerman's, the Nats have 22 home runs against right handed pitchers since the 27th of August. That's the most in baseball. More than Texas, Boston, and the Blue Jays. Three superb power hitting teams from the American League. And this is not a heavily laden left handed lineup either. Zimmerman gets jammed. Ball out into short center. It is on the ground. And Desmond comes in to score. The Nationals lead six to one and a two RBI day for Ryan Zimmerman. That's a nice add on run for the Nats making a four run lead a five run lead. Big difference you're taking the grand slam one swing away from the Astros late in the ball game. And you keep your hands inside the baseball good things will happen. Ryan Zimmerman fighting to get inside of that ball. Another two out hit another two out RBI for the Nats. Ryan with 45 on the year now and here's Michael Morris.
Ball two. Yeah, the Nats 10 hits today. There have been some bullets and some missiles, but there's also been some very creative hits as well. That one by Zim right there. Jason's worth lobs wedge over the mound early in the baseball game. So all kinds of different ways to get knocks today. Look at that. Michael Moore, six out of seven in the first two games this year at Houston. Oh, you remember when we were at Minimate, he made a mockery of that ballpark. He hit that one ball halfway up the windows, over the train tracks. I think it's still going as we speak. And they gave him some 402 on the home run, which was not even close. I think in the games the Nats have played in that ballpark over the last three years, they've averaged right around two home runs per game in that place. Okay. Hollywood Casino Charlestown races with high slugging percentage guys and only two guys on that list. Well, three now with Ryan Braun are National Leaguers. So those American Leaguers have more guys on base for them. Curtis Granderson having an amazing season. Michael Morse is swinging a miss. VIP seats, MVP eats at every game day at Hollywood Casino. Charlestown races. Zim the RBI. Nats by five. One month free wireless and free smartphone. Just sign up at Cox Wireless at the local solution store or by visiting Cox.com. Power, pitching, and Danny Espinoza back to life for the Nats today. Yeah, Danny Espinoza with a nice day so far, breaking up an 0 for 15 coming into today with a double in the second inning. Nice piece right there going the other way. Short hops, defense, and left field. He comes up again in the third. How about pulling a double? This time, all the way in the right center field gap. So a couple of knocks for Danny today, two for three. And just another whole home play on defense from center field. Great range going away, all the way up the middle, throwing across his body. We've seen him do that so many times this year. So Danny Espinoza, a much needed good day. Sean Burnett goes to work here, top of the seventh. Matt Downs for the Astros. Clint Barmas and Carlos Corporan to follow. Six, seven, and eight for Houston. Now these guys can string some hits together, but they have to do that to make any kind of comeback. The Astros, not a power hitting ball club, only 85 homers on the year. San Diego, the only ball club with fewer at 82. So they've got to have an inning like they did in the third last night to get back in this game. That ball is scorched out to center, and Jason Worth is over to grab it. He had that ball so hard, it might have had some knuckling action on it. Nats are coming home next weekend to play the Marlins, and Friday night will be Roberto Clemente night at the ballpark. So join the Nats in honoring the great Clemente as we do every year. Tickets start at $10. Go to nationals.com slash tickets 
For all your Nats, Marlins, Roberto Clemente. Ticket information. I'm looking at the Nats roster. Nobody has number 21. I don't see an Astro with that number either. Nope. There's Barmas. Jason Marquis did have 21 when he was here. I think Dimitri Young wore that number a couple of years ago. Oh, and two to Barmas, who has bounced out to third and popped up to second. Two balls and two strikes to Barmas. And Burnett gets a line drive right at Ryan Zimmerman. Two outs. So the Astros have scorched a couple here in the seventh. Nothing to show. Looks like catcher J.R. Tolls. Right hitting hitting catcher will make his first appearance in this series. Another one of the FP all initial team that the Astros have been featuring all weekend. Well, they got a bunch of them and they all start with J. You need somebody that begins with an F. J.B. Shuck, J.R. Tolls, J.D. Martinez. Lance Pendleton is throwing. He's the latest addition to their bullpen. Between the initials and the Rodriguez's, they got it covered. Sean Burnett working quickly. J.R. Tolls. 191 for the Astros last year. Had a torn ligament in his right thumb that shortened his season. And for Houston this season, hitting 178 in 46 ball games with three homers and 10 RBIs. 26-year-old catcher from Crosby, Texas. And Sean Burnett overmatches him with that fastball running away. Number nine spot coming up. Chris Johnson, who started the first two games of this series, waiting to pinch hit. Burnett continues to throw strikes here in the seventh. Nationals trying to win their 41st home game of the year. With six to go after today. They won 41 and lost 40 here last year. This one out beyond second base. Espinosa out. Jason Worth there to tell everybody to peel off. And it's time for the seventh inning stretch here at Nationals Park. Back to back to back home runs back in the third and the Nats have led coast to coast here. All the flags are at half mast around the Washington area today. It's hanging proudly there over at Iwo Jima in Roslyn at the monument across the river.
Baseball on Masson brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Drive one. Stop by. Beautiful day in our nation's capital. The Washington Monument framed against a beautiful sky. Couldn't ask for a better baseball day. 81 degrees. On to the Big Apple. Nats open a series against the Mets tomorrow night. Ross Detweiler at City Field against the New Yorkers. He's 2-5 and five with a 383 ERA. Was scheduled to start the other night. His doubleheader start got rained out. And here's R.A. Dickey. Four starts against the Nats this season. Very little mystery here with a 4.18 ERA and a 1-2 and two record. Nats extra 6.30. We join you from City Field at 7 o'clock. And first pitch tomorrow night at 7.10. It seems like R.A. Dickey has started against the Nats 10 times this year. Twenty-eight-year-old right-hander Lance Pendleton takes over, and there's been a kind of a Houston Yankee thing going for the last year with the Berkman deal and other transactions. Astros took him from the Yankees in the Rule Five draft last December. Six-three, one ninety-five. He is from Kingwood, Texas, in the Houston area. Rodriguez it gets into the game at some point when Houston plays Washington. Bullpen's been good today. Four innings now with Gorzolani and Burnett. No runs on only one hit. And Jason Worth will be seeing fastball, slider, curveball change. Fastball will be in the upper 80s. Nice to go to a slider against right handers. And he'll be working with J.R. Tolls, who takes over behind the plate for Houston. So for the Nats, it'll be 5, 6, and 7. Worth Espinosa and Marrero, bottom 7. And Pendleton thing's a funny deal. He was rule 5 by the Astros. From the Yankees, went to spring training with the Astros, was returned to New York on March 28th, and they just claimed him off waivers from the Yankees once again. Yeah. So started with the Astros, went to the Yankees, back with the Astros. Because if you take a guy in the Rule 5 draft and he's not in your Major League Ball Club all year, whenever he's dropped from that 25 man roster, you have to offer him back to the previous club. So the Yankees said, We'll take him back. Then they waived him later on. So here's Worth, one for three, and Jason in this series, three for 12. Swing and a miss. Jason Worth down on strikes for the third time today. If you're hitting the road, take the Nats with you everywhere you go. Live on demand on your computer or your favorite device. MLB.tv. For info and to order, you can visit nationals.com and take MLB.tv with you. It's baseball everywhere. Quite a ball game going on in Milwaukee this afternoon. The Brewers lead the Phillies 1-0 as Philadelphia tries to sweep that four-game series behind Vance Worley today. And St. Louis is hammering in Atlanta 6-0 at home. They're about to sweep the Braves. And suddenly they're only six games back of Milwaukee in a race that everybody thought was over a week ago. We're good. We need some races. Yeah, there's a, there's a lack of them right now. AL East. AL West. Angels only a game and a half back at Texas. Red Sox two and a half back at the Yankees, but they're both going to the playoffs. It's all or nothing in the West for the Angels and the Rangers. Though. 
Diamondbacks have opened up a nine and a half game lead over the Giants. Phillies 12 over Atlanta. And the Tigers in the AL Central nine and a half over the White Sox. They've won eight straight. Look out for the Tigers in October. Strike three on the corner. Paul Emmel calls out Danny Espinosa. And Lance Pendleton has fanned the first two. Let's check out the last pitch of Danny Espinosa. A 2 2 sinker. Too close to take, probably. Here's Chris Marrero, who's had a really good day. Two for two. Sack fly, RBI double, and a base hit. When you talk about the Tigers, you talk about the year Justin Verlander's having a lot of talk about him for MVP, but. And I think when you talk about Steven Strasburg and you look at Justin Verlander, very similar stuff. Very similar pitchers, and all of a sudden it's all clicked for Verlander this year. And why? Because of the off speed. So Pendleton hits Marrero. So Chris is on for the third time today, and that'll bring in Wilson Ramos. And Chris Marrero having a good day. A double, a single, a sack fly. And wearing a fastball. That's low and inside to Ramos. 0 for 1 with a pair of walks today. Lance Nix, if it gets down to the number 9 spot, that's what hit for Burnett and bring in. Henry Rodriguez. He's probably coming in anyway. Wow, and there's another batter hit as we hear that one make contact with the helmet of Wilson Ramos. He got him in the face, I think, a little bit too. That's why they wear the ear protector, the jaw protector on that side facing the pitcher. And you never want to do that as a pitcher, obviously, but when you start messing around with the head and throwing up there, whether you meant to do it or you didn't mean to do it, this is the major leagues. And you're supposed to have better command than this. Oh. And Lee Coons out to check out on Wilson Ramos at first base right now, taking inventory, making sure he's okay. You don't want to mess around with anybody that ever gets hit in the face or the head area. And Wilson Ramos is tough. We all know that. So he's going to stay in the game. Give a little round of applause for the fans here at Nath Park. And Doug Brocale going to go out to the mound and talk to his pitcher try to lock him back in but I guarantee you he's excited that there's not a right hander in the box. Heading for the bill of his cap. Oh that got him. That got him right in the cheek. Maybe yeah. a little helmet before that but. That's already swollen you can see it right there. And that didn't feel good, Trent. Yep. <laughs> you stick your finger. You're a first base coach, not a doctor. <laughs> Don't be poking on me. He stuck his finger right where it hit. Right hander Wilton Lopez up quickly for the Astros as Lance Nix now will pinch it. Does this hurt? Yeah. Don't do it. It's okay if the trainer does it, but when the first base coach does it. Oh and one to Lance Nix, two on, two out. It's been a weird inning, two strikeouts and two hit batters. So pull it foul. Count stays 0 2. Lance easing his way into action here after being beat up for a couple of weeks. Two for 23 as a pinch hitter, a couple of RBIs. He's had a fine year with 16 homers and 43 ribbies. Not 
bad numbers for a guy who doesn't play nearly every day. And very little lately. He'll stroke one out to center that'll get on the ground. And Lance Nix will pick up an RBI driving in Marrero. The Nationals lead 7-1. to one. That's for all the balls he's gashed at somebody that were caught this year. Well, it won't make up for all of them, but it'll help. And when you're not playing on a regular basis, you get a pinch hit single like that, RBI. I say it all the time. Lance Nix feels like he just went four for four. He's staying on the off-speed pitch down in the zone. Good swing. Knock, stake. Thanks for coming. As Roger Bernardina comes out of the dugout to pinch run for Lance Nix. And we'll get a new pitcher as well. So it's the seventh inning. The Nats have seven on the board, leading by six. Deeper into that deep Houston bullpen in a moment. hits today and a big lead over Houston as they try to split this season series at three apiece and for you folks who have season tickets for next year or for this year pardon me renew for next year by Thursday a 5% discount coming your way check it out at nationals.com slash renew well those young men came to the ballpark to see some offense today and they have seen plenty Wilton Lopez for the Astros. And he'll make his first appearance of the series. 28-year-old right-hander. Ian Desmond goes up hacking. He's at a two-for-four day, a homer, and two runs scored. By the way, Lopez did pitch, pardon me, in the 11th inning. Up the middle, base hit. It's another RBI. Another runner scampers to third. So Ramos is home. And Ian Desmond has a three for five day with two runs batted in. It's the kind of outburst we've been waiting for here at home. Ian Desmond with a nice job of just going right back up the middle. So a home run to left, a base hit to right, and then a knock stake with two outs up the middle. Another two out hit, another two out RBI for the Nats. Now Rick and Keel stepping in. He'll slap it to the right side and picked up by Matt Downs. Another good inning for the Nats though. 
couple of hit batters. They're okay. Two hits and two runs. Eight to one now. Ballpark at Nationals Park in our nation's capital. This one goes to the eighth. It's Washington eight to one. This copyrighted telecast presented by Authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Henry Rodriguez again. He actually took a night off last night after a scoreless eighth with a hit and a strike out here Friday night. I just think that Davey Johnson's running Henry Rodriguez out there so much in the month of September because he wants Henry to be very comfortable going into the next year. You know, get him as many innings as you can, get him comfortable on the mound, get him confident going into the offseason to where. He's throwing strikes on a consistent basis. I think that's a great point. You don't want him working out control issues at the end of spring training next year. Because FP, it's hard to get guys innings in spring training at times. It is. You're talking about a guy that, you know, you still want to answer the question, can you count on him for 2012? Facing a pinch hitter here, J.B. Shuck. Who's 0 for his last 13. 2 0 count and he gets a swinging foul ball there. Jack Burdett Shuck the third from Westerville Ohio. He was a Buckeye for three years in the college ranks. 24 year old rookie. J.B. Shuck. Well, that's a good looking fastball, but it just misses three and one. Nice game flow going for the Nats right now here in the eighth. B1 with it, hand cooked tires. Rodriguez on a 3 2. Throws a strike and gives up a base hit. That's a welcome base hit for JB, breaking up an 0 for 13. Top of the order now, Jordan Schaefer, 1 for 3 today. And three for 13 in the series. Good looking fastball, 98 outside corner.
Tapper, Marrero. Looked at the throw, didn't like what he saw, so he takes the sure out ahead by seven runs. Just as we reach the four o'clock hour here at Nationals Park. Ball game, just over two hours and 20 minutes old. The Nats with a run in the second, four in the third with back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back homers. Another tally in the sixth and two in the seventh. Healthy lead at home. It feels good to relax and enjoy a seven-run lead. Now, we're the ones relaxing, not the ball club. And here's Jimmy Paredes with a runner at second, one out. If I'm Ian Desmond and I got three hits and a home run, I'm relaxing a little bit. <laughs> Danny Espinosa, a couple of doubles. I'll relax a little bit. I mean, you're still focused on the game, obviously, right. up by seven runs, but you get knocks, you're relaxed. Feeling good about yourself. Nationals have been involved in 49 one run games this year. There's a little flare out to left center that'll drop. Shuck will stop at third. He didn't read it right off the bat. So he'll be there with one out and J.D. Martinez coming up. So let's see, then if you add 29 more two run decisions, the Nats this year have been involved in 78 what you would call close games. Wow. 78 out of the previous 143. And I'll guarantee you there's a handful of those that maybe got away late either way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were close for what, seven innings, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good call. It just seems like the majority of the games this season, win, lose, have been close baseball games. We haven't had too many games. We're up here, partner, trying to fill some, fill some innings in with routes either way. So Henry's given up a line drive and a flare. Scoreboard says one ball, one strike. Was it a swing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Martinez 0 for 2. A walk last time. A race on the double play thrown by Gorzolani to end his three, three very effective innings. And now Wilson Ramos gets hammered again. He's been hit by a pitch, and then that ball changes directions on him. I mean, that got him flushed, too. We were talking about Carlos Corporan last night. Wilson Ramos is that guy today. you got to love it to catch, boy. I'll tell you what. Mm. you got armor everywhere. even got a little flap hanging off your right shoulder. And where does it get you? Right below that flap. You know, and you can't strap some big old thing on there because then you can't throw to second. So that thing has to be loose and give him full range of motion with that shoulder to throw. Jesus Flores took that one off his right shoulder a couple of years ago, and look how long it's been for him. I mean, you can't send a guy out there in a coat of armor. Got to be able to move around, and catchers are so athletic these days. These guys are like big cats. One ball and two strikes. Nats looking for the double play ball here. Swing and a miss. How about a strikeout for out number two instead? Henry always has that capability. I'll check it out one more time. Just a challenge fastball to J.D. Martinez. And it was a pretty good one. You can see the rotation on that pitch. Not the true four-seam rotation. A little late run in to Martinez. Here's Lee. Well, we thought Strasburg and Lee would be a fun matchup. How about Henry Rodriguez and Carlos Lee? That pitch was 99. Carlos one for two with an RBI hit and a walk today. He's had a good series. Five for 12 with two runs batted in. He said at least would have been easy home runs in Houston. One was a double, one was caught. Every once in a while, wouldn't you just like to see a guy that throws upper 90s, close to 100, 
facing the other team's best hitter. And he just looks at him and he says, bro, I'm going to throw you all fastballs. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Not even messing around. No sign. I'm just going to challenge you with my best against your best. Well, eight to one, it could happen. That's 98 down in the way. Two balls, two strikes. And I'm sure throughout the course of this game, there's been times when that has happened, but I would love to see it. A guy like Kimbo versus Pulhos. Rodriguez right here throws 100 versus Lee. You get the big boys up there. Here it is. See if you can beat me. Nothing but gas here. Runners at the corners, two outs. That was 98, and the count's full, so Jimmy Paredes will be on the way from first base here in a moment. By the way, the Astros are warming up their closer. Mark Melanson, who needs some work to face Zimmerman, Morrison, Worth in the bottom of the eighth. That'll be fun. 3-2 pitch. Out to center. Well hit by Lee. And Worth is there at the edge of the track. I'll throw it 100, and you can hit it as far as you can. Three, four, and five coming up. what's going on Ryan Zimmerman a big day Ian Desmond a big day Chris Marrero Danny Espinosa you name it Steven Strasburg started this thing and even though he struggled he did throw three very effective innings let's go back to the third inning and check out the three taters in a row for the Nats it started with Ian Desmond fastball in gone actually that might have been a slider in it's a long time ago McCann Keel into the bullpen gone Ryan Zimmerman, left center field. Gone. Back to back to back. Jackson, the third for the Nets. We like watching home runs. First time since July of 09, Ed Houston, and the fifth time in franchise history. Second time in Nationals history, and it's been the Houston Astros both times. Here's their closer, Mark Melanson. Who has 19 saves on the year? We were impressed with the way he threw the ball when the Nats were down there in Houston. He came over with Jimmy Paredes for Lance Berkman and Cash July 31st of last year. Yeah, four pitch closer, fastball cutter, curveball change. Yankees took him in the ninth round back in 06. He only got 15 games of action for New York in 09 and 10. And then 20 games toward the end of last season for the Astros, and now he's closing things out for them. But closers for ball clubs who lose twice as many as they win are often starved for work. Ryan Zimmerman, first pitch fly ball. Caught foul ground. Good play by Brian Bogusevic. Nice crowd at the ballpark today. 
9-11 football starting a lot of things going on 24,238 paid and they have been entertained by lots of offense even without this big guy participating a very rare 0 for 4 for Michael Morris. It's okay Michael was 3 for 8 with a homer and a walk first two games of this series. He's got a chance to salvage a day right here with this at bat. Lanson with that good sinker burying one down and in on him here. 95 on that thing. That was nasty. Wow. The movement was nasty. Mark Melanson's only 26. Got a bright future. Jason Worth next here in the eighth. Ross Detweiler tomorrow night at the Mets against R.A. Dickey. You've heard of him, we think. Got knuckleball. Faces the Nats every other week. Yeah. They face him more than some of the coaches. <laughs> <laughs> and that's upstairs for the strikeout. Two down. So the Nats on the verge of their 67th win of the year, putting them within two of last year's entire season total. And 17 games remaining. 11 of those on the road. Worth one for four today. And the count's even 1 1. Duck Slayton has been warming for the Nats. Looks like he's slated for the ninth. On another, the heels of another good scoreless inning by Henry Rodriguez. Two balls, one strike. Danny Espinosa, two for four day. And the count will go to three and one. Checking around the scoreboard for the division one more time. Marlins 4 1 ninth inning at Pittsburgh. Phillies have taken a 2 1 lead at Milwaukee. And Atlanta now trailing 6 2. It was 6 0 at St. Louis. The Mets and the Cubs play the Sunday night game at 8 o'clock this evening. Phillies got home runs from Shane Victorino and Ryan Howard in the top of the sixth at Milwaukee, trying to sweep a four game series there. So much for a playoff preview. And a swing and a miss. Worth is gone. So are the Nats in the eighth. Three outs to get for the Nats to head on to New York.
event and and today we can kind of uh, you know reflect a little bit on that particular day and 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 play baseball and get everybody to come out here and and uh, and reflect and have some fun as well. Nats have done that. A lot to reflect on today. A lot of fun. Twelve uh, twelve hits, eight runs. And the Nats about to have a 4-5 and five homestand with a win today. And what about a Morgan Franklin pivotal play for us today, FP? Where do you start? Well, let's start with September 11th. Why not? Nice. You talk about 10 years ago, baseball helps everybody heal. Well, I think it's still helping everybody heal. And we decided to make it our Morgan Franklin pivotal play. About to go 5-1 and one with the Stars and Stripes unis. So love the unis, best unis in baseball, and on a day... And everybody's proud to be an American. We're going to make that our Morgan Franklin Pivotal Play. Morgan Franklin and their clients know that Pivotal Plays don't just happen in sports. See who's making them in business and government at PivotalPlays.com. And in typical American fashion, I second that motion. Jason Bourgeois will hit for Brian Bogusevic here in the ninth Ah. inning. How did he not get in the lineup today after last night? Line drives all over the place. Pretty good approach. We were very impressed with his swing. Yeah, he had a nice series. Batted second in the second game. He went three for five Friday night. And then two, three more hits last night. So he was six for ten in the first two games of the series. He'll roll it out to Ian Desmond. Low throw and a good pick by Morero for the first out. So the Nats will tie the season series with the Houston Ball Club at three each. They will win their 41st game of the year at home. Davey telling Trent Jewett, do not poke Wilson Ramos in the face anymore. (laughs) He said, I'm a first base coach, but I played a doctor on television. Matt Downs, the hitter. And a ball lashed out to right center that'll plug the gap. Cut off by Jason Worth, and Downs will have his second hit today. Clint Barma's the hitter. Barmas is 0 for 3 today with a bouncing ball to third. Pop up to second. And a liner to Zimmerman at third. Astros have seven hits, one run. The Nats, eight runs on 12 hits. Houston heading home for one series before they go out on the road again. Slayton, good job of jamming the right-handed hitter. Counts 2 2. That ball really hit hard, hooking foul. Barmas putting a charge in that one. He batted seventh on Friday night and hit a ground rule double down that line. Later single to run in. Astros don't have too many guys who've been around the big leagues for a long time, but this is one of them. And a one-two pitch sounded like a busted bat. 
on a ball that'll hit and skip out of play. Stay till the ninth inning. You get a souvenir. Impress your date. Hear the ball. He's not giving that thing up. This one lofted out to left, and it'll be easy for Michael Morse to down. That'll bring in the catcher, J.R. Tolls. Johnny Holiday and Ray Knight here with us at the ballpark. Nets extra coming up next when the ball game's over. And the old right handed hitter, Ray Knight, will have a lot to analyze from the offensive side of the ball today. Ray. I'm sure this will be one of his most enjoyable post game shows of the year. Johnny will guide him through it and guide you through it in just a few moments. That's a little bit outside to Tolls, who flied to center, pinch hitting in the seventh inning. Bouncing ball, Zimmerman backs up for it. And the ball is off the glove of Marrero, who tried to stay on the bag. And the runner, Matt Downs, will score from second on the play. Yeah, Ryan got the hard part out of the way on this stab. Ball's by him in between hop. Nice play, gloving it. Maybe had a second more than he thought he did, and it just pulls off Marrero. Slayton thought the game was over. Now he's got to regroup. Going to bring in Chris Johnson to pinch hit here. And he'll bounce it. And that'll be slowed down by Slayton. Desmond makes the play. Game over. And this ball game ends just the way we hope this day might be. Nice and peaceful in D.C. And a lopsided win for the home team. Pretty good play by Ian Desmond and this one. A little ricochet off Doug Slayton. Bare hand. On the run. Bang, bang at first. And you said it, partner. Great way to end this ballgame. Great day for the Nats. Washington Nationals win it. 8-2. to two, And we've got more from Nationals Park straight ahead.